The, hi, everybody, and welcome to this third international conference on food design. Thank, uh, welcome to this third keynote presentation. I am Dr. Francesca Zampolo. I am the founder of the Online School of Food Design. And we are here again live for you with this third keynote presentation. Uh, I am very, very happy and thrilled to introduce to you uh, today Alessa, uh, see, Ludovico Pensato and Alessandra Evil, uh, who are the uh, minds behind, the beautiful minds behind Panem your chances and their presentation today is titled between critical food design and food poetry before we start with them before i give them the the stage this virtual stage i just want to welcome all of you again and if you're watching this on the conference website don't forget you uh, come and join us in the live chat room which is where you are able to ask your question and hang out with one another and network um, but more specifically interact with um ludovico and alessandra alessandra is already in the chat room you see that you see her there I think she's gone now for a moment, but she's there. Uh, so you are able to also, um, um, is there a problem with this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, sorry. Uh, you're able to also uh, chat with them directly and, and uh, in private. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, then come on over and join us in the Online School of Food Design um, um, conference webpage at onlineschoolofffooddesign.org. Uh, where you are able to, besides participate in the chat room and hang out with us, you are also able to see the replay of all the presentations from yesterday. We, yesterday we had four sessions with a total of ten presentations. Uh, you are able to see the information of all speakers um, and uh, download the conference proceeding and also uh, go and have a look at the virtual food design exhibition. Also, I want to remind you that this conference doesn't have to be a secret, so you're welcome to share it with all your friends and colleagues whom you think might be interested in this type of event. Our hashtag is Food Design Live. Enough from me. Um, welcome again to all of you who are in the chat room. I see there's a good group already. Uh, you can start asking your question anytime, and during the Q&A, Q &A, I will be reading the question out loud to our speakers. Okay, I am very thrilled to introduce to you guys our um, food designers today. I know maybe for them, for the, the, the term food designer, they're not very, maybe 100% happy about it, but in my eyes, they are food designers, they are critical food designers. It's time to give them the stage. So, Ludovico and Alessandra, this virtual stage is yours. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Um, <clears throat> we are uh, Parametri Chances, we are an artistic uh, collective formed by me, Alessandra and Ludovico. Um, we work with uh, relational art and uh, participatory practices using food and deck of eating as tools and uh, at the same time as our research uh, object to uh, inspect human uh, relations. Uh, so, if you want to talk about pandemic chances uh, as a subject uh, working in the food design panorama, uh, we must specify this expression. So, please, the quick one. Yes, uh, hi everybody. And for me, uh, as Francesca said, uh, introducing us, uh, we must, uh, and as Alessandra retold really you, uh, we must specify in which way, uh, which kind of approach can uh, be used to talk about parametric chances as a subject of working in food design panorama. So the approach is the critical one, uh, because uh, in Italy we have, um, quite, pre we have a quite precise language uh, in semantics, but when we use a foreign expression, uh, this precision uh, it lacks. And usually, so for this reason, due to this, when we talk about food design in Italy, we usually uh, refer to architects or product designers that use uh, their technical background uh, and focuses on food, on food as an object itself, or uh, maybe on its consumption.
or uh, the accessories uh, like cutleries or packaging or communication around it. So basically, it, it remains uh, product design. Um, so if we want to talk about panometric chances like a food design collective, we must say that uh, we are a critical food designer. And uh, the, the, the title of our intervention, suggested by Francesca, is uh, between critical food design and food poetry. And food poetry for us uh, means uh, the, the way in, in which we use the food. Alessandra already told you that uh, we use food as a tool, as an instrument to examine human relation. And for us, food is a meaningful object. And yes, we use it uh, as a tool to try to understand uh, where we position ourselves in uh, an axis uh, that has got nature and culture and uh, the beginning and the start of that line. And these two, uh, these two terms once were uh, one in, in harmony, and uh, we use food to try to reconnect these two dimensions. And uh, food is the, the perfect object because it is at the same time natural and cultural, and so it's a perfect tool. And doing it by uh, using the, the the method and the art. Of, uh, discipline uh, gives our project more strength to communicate this, uh, this, uh, this kind of, uh, of work and of project. Um, there's a, a, a quote by an independent curator that is Silvia Petronici that I like to uh, quote and I'm going to read, I'm going to read you uh, what she write about our work because uh, uh, it's quite clear uh, in uh, her words that this um, this link, this connection uh, in our food poetry. She said, uh, by using the performance genre and placing dedicated care in the construction of situation, site-specific, time-specific, and with established rules, Panamachir Chances explores the world of ceremony, of magic ritual. Performative gestures are intrinsically magical, giving shape and form to the things of the imagination. They attract attention, they engage us at an emotional level, and they lift our spirits. A keen awareness of the expressive power of gesture and the power of evocation take their work beyond a forceful sense of revelation in sociological and political terms to include metaphysical principles that are achieved through sensitivity, relations, and intimacy. So, uh, to make it clearer, these words as these sentences. Now we can show you some of our uh, yeah, work. I would like to, um, to show you uh, some uh, pictures and some examples of Panamagia Chess's work that in our opinion show um, what we already said. So the first uh, artwork is uh, critical. Um, I would say that is one of our uh, most important uh, artwork. Um, we um, realized it four years ago, I guess. And um, for us, it was uh, um, a journey because um, it's uh, an evolutionary discourse on uh, the act of eating considered as a cognitive act in the world. And so we, when, when we designed this work, um, we had a question in our mind that was, how do we know the world from food? Because in our opinion, the act of eating, like as a cognitive uh, uh, act, is uh, actually the first act that we use uh, um, knowing the, the world. And Triticon is a work in three acts and is an exorcist, as we said, and uh, materia, um, 
The first actor is related to substance, and uh, all the actors are related to an element. The, this the first one is related to earth, soil, and uh, to an age of uh, humankind. This is related to childhood, and the cognitive approach is direct, so without knowledge and without tools. So this was the table that uh, um, the people, the participants, find out in the gallery when they arrived there, and they only knew that they had to participate to a food experience uh, where the, the act, uh, the action, uh, the action of eating was the act that gives um, the meaning of the artwork. And so this act material uh, was uh, so like um, a table garden where the food uh, was uh, hidden inside these rocks uh, and uh, under the soils. Uh, and when the people arrived, they didn't know uh, anything about it. They should find a um, new and no way to, to the food. It was really interesting to see how different groups um, relation themselves uh, to, to this table because. Um, uh, so, for example, one group, uh, so they build a kind of new uh, society where uh, there was the, um, the people that break all the stones and, uh, and then they share um, knowledge and foods. And uh, uh, in other groups, for example, there was a kind of women society where the men stay part and wait that the women uh, bring them the food. The second act was uh, the Lateria. Um, uh, it was connected, related to the, um, uh, to the element of water and to the adolescence age of men. Uh, it is a um, speculative uh, approach uh, mediated by tools and by equipment. It was um, a lab table, a uh, steel table like the chemical lab with chemical and lab instruments and uh, while the, the element is the water, people should uh, transform and use water to, uh, to build, to, re to, to recognize and transform the substance, uh, the hydrated one, um, liophilizated one, uh, and they had to turn these, uh, these uh, products in, into food by using water and by following instrument, by following instruction. So if the, while the first act was without any instruction, uh, like the easy early human that didn't know what to eat and how to do it, the second one was mediated by tools and instruction. Uh, until we arrived at the third one, that is the Theria. Uh, that is an act of the uh, maturity uh, of man, the element is the air, and the food is not mo anymore just uh, food for stomach, but it's also a food of, for brain, uh, for our imagination, for our intellect. And one of the... Uh, one of the contemporary aspect of the uh, aesthetic of food is that could be really, really uh, bad in a manner that uh, transform us in a uh, voyeur. Um, this phenomenon is uh, well known as food power. And in this case, we transform people that were attending at the event in object uh, of the view of the view of the other participant. So not anymore the food uh, is the object of our voyeurism, but ourself, uh, ourself as an uh, eater. And uh, as you see, it seems a prepared uh, photo, but it's not. It's, uh, it's genuine, uh, like people uh, use the devices uh, uh, quite uh, our best friend while we are talking about food and um, in this case the, the food experience uh, was uh, an experience of uh, intangible food and um, aesthetic one that has not uh, any uh, any opportunity to fill our stomach but it was really 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 aesthetic and uh, 
the joke was uh, uh, try to understand what people uh, thought after past two or three hours just with intangible food. And yeah, what I would all. like to underline of these uh, works, um, this artwork, uh, this react, uh, that, that it was really a kind of uh, sociological experiment because people uh, didn't know what they were going to do. They um, just know that, that they are going there to an experience and the meaning of the artwork was the act of eating. And the, the action of the participant um, emerged from the design of food, food tools and all the settings. And we designed everything. And actually what happened for me and for us was uh, an amazing out actually it works and that was a really important work for work for us because um, after that yeah, we stopped to use uh, food in our yeah, work. We first stopped using food but there's another thing I like to underline of this project that we uh, we also um, decided to, to create a name for this kind of food experience that it was uh, action eating referring to the action painting or the uh, art situation like happenings where the participation of people make the artwork and you must you must interact using your brain in a different way uh, to uh, produce the, the artwork because if you don't interact in a smart way and in, in with the, uh, by using your independent thought uh, nothing happens and um, as Alessandro was saying, uh, yeah, after this uh, project, uh, we decided to uh, radically change, start changing the way we use food in our project. Because when we started uh, working as Panamachia Chances, we were in uh, Berlin, and when we came back to Italy, uh, we discovered and we we saw that uh, Italian people has got or say to to have uh, a great food culture, and this is um, a huge, uh, a huge thing they uh, they bring with them. Because uh, our thought, our thought go always uh, to the recipe, to the gastronomic aspect, to the uh, taste, to the memories connected to a dish or to a flavor. So uh, when we want to. Uh, uh, examine other dimension of the relation people have got with food, we always have difficulties to go beyond this gastronomic and tasting aspect. So we start to change the manner in which food uh, were, is present in our work, in our yeah. project. And do he, here we have another example of um, another work. Uh, this uh, the name of this work is Ein Hunger Künstler. Uh, this is the um, German name, and uh, in English the translation is uh, uh, a fasting artist. And um, that's the, um, the name of the last tale of uh, Kafka. And this work is a work that we design for an uh, um, NGO uh, project uh, working mostly in, um, in Africa, uh, bringing their uh, Good uh, uh, agricola practices. Uh, practices uh, um, so, how to say, it doesn't need to be rhetorical, but fighting uh, world hunger. And so, this is a word, uh, work about uh, um, world, hu um, world hunger. And that's a work that I really love. And now I will tell you why. And um, so, um, as you can see, this is uh, the room where uh, this particip the participatory work and performance uh, took place and uh, as you can see there is a big uh, buffet in the center of the of the room uh, so uh, rich uh, big opulent and uh, yeah, it's not actually a contemporary high cuisine buffet it's just more an 80s uh, rich buffet and uh, as you can see in other device of this work, uh, uh, on the left side there's a countdown and uh, there, there's six performers uh, and uh, um, there's, uh, um, there was uh, 30, um, 30. 30. 
sorry, thank you, um, cooking review that we re-edited uh, and on the cover um, we printed uh, uh, sentences and quotes and definition from the tale of uh, Kafka um, about uh, hunger, uh, food and uh, show business. And uh, we decided to um, work with Kafka because uh, actually uh, our point of view is that uh, uh, word hunger is a paradox and so we use a paradox to um, speak about this thing. And um, so now then the action. So uh, people will enter in the room, uh, we gave uh, them uh, an empty plate and uh, only an uh, instruction to keep in hand always, so during the action, this plate. Um, on the background uh, there was a reading of Kafka Tales and uh, the countdown goes. And yeah, people, and two times during the countdown, performers in the hall just repeat the sentence uh, we are waiting for other people and at the end of the countdown just people during the, the action could try to read if they can uh, without uh, leaving the plate and could just go around and just uh, look at the buffet and smell it if they want because it was very smelling and colorful and joyful and so uh, people are were waiting all the time to eat the buffet uh, at the end of the countdown performer asked people to give back the plate without eating and when people uh, gave back the empty plate performer gave them a postcard this postcard uh, on the front there is the sentence we are waiting for other people and on the back uh, there's the number of people we are waiting for. These 295 million people are the ones we are waiting. And these are the people that face anger uh, every day holding an empty plate, not just for the 50 minutes that the performance takes place. And it was amazing to see the reaction of, of people participating to the, to the event. That was really strong. It was really strong and most of them uh, tell us, uh, told us that they cannot afford to, to go to dinner after seeing the performance. But the real point of this uh, work and what, uh, what it uh, gives it uh, a real, real power and strength is that every time we uh, set up Ainung uh, Kunstler, Basically, at the end, there's a, a charitable organization that has got the entire buffet for poor people. And so every time Einler uh, Kusner takes place, there's a lot of uh, poor people that need food that can eat. So, uh, just to summarize, we use the paradox, as Alessandro said, because the word anger for us is parado uh, paradoxical. And I mean that uh, there's not a problem of uh, scarcity of food, there's a problem of access to the resources. And what is Ayn Lekusner say? So this is a perfect example um, of a project where we put together and we combine a critical food design approach and our food poetry. So, and now um, let's talk a little bit uh, um, about why we are doing this and how. Um, one way, and uh, so we would like to talk, to, uh, talk about uh, uh, the Center of Contemporary Art on Food Culture that uh, um, uh, in Italian. The yeah, in, in Italian we have an acronym for uh, for this that is CACA, that uh, in English means. Uh, and this created sensation and indignation for the reference to the excrement, of course, but without anyone considering the biological circle of the food, the organic natural circle of food, and most of all, without anyone uh, considering the real provocation that it was that just the two of us uh, 
decided to uh, to start an institutional art center in a space that is at least like 20 square meters. And so in 2014, uh, the Center for Contemporary Art and Food Culture uh, opened and we uh, started our activity uh, by organizing a, a festival uh, that was uh, focused on the utopia on food field. But utopia uh, not as a, not as an um, impossible uh, thing to achieve, but just like someone uh, guided by a principle of hope that is possible to achieve by following uh, the road path. And Utopia was inspired by a work by Panama Chief Chances that is Eutopos, and it is, that it means the good place. And it's a work on uh, the uh, importance of questioning. Uh, like an instrument of maintaining our brain uh, stimulated and questioning on food system and try to uh, try to make uh, meaning question of meaning on the food system. So then, uh, Utopos make uh, the, the start of the of the festival of the center that is Utopia. Uh, Good practices, Alessandra, what we want to tell you something? Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, last year was the 500th anniversary of Utopia by Sir uh, Thomas More, and uh, so uh, we um, we organized this festival called Utopia, so the good place again, participatory um, practices around food play places that don't exist yet and we have 10 artists and professionals um, of the food culture um, working on the concept uh, of utopia and uh, so yeah we have some uh, example just to show you uh, all the different way uh, in which art language called uh, relation with, uh, with people and so for example we have an installation in, uh, inside the Kaka and uh, this is um, another participatory, participatory work uh, uh, in a garden um, in another stu studio in our uh, road so Kaka is uh, and um, here we have another work that actually was a conference uh, that involved a uh, chef and a food researcher and uh, that was another artwork uh, also inside uh, the, uh, the center and this is a video installation and uh, then we, all, we had uh, um, a talk uh, in the cafe where former yeah it's not proper academic uh, location <laughs> but we like to share and to spread uh, Kaka in the neighbor. So, because we think that it is important to start making a physical network in, in the neighbor if you want to reach people that uh, really live here every day. And so, uh, you must start from the, from the local to, to get, uh, if you want to get far. And this is um, the last This example. one was the last one, uh, that was uh, um, an exhibition uh, of the result of a uh, compost, uh, food compost. And the current reason uh, why in Italy is important to uh, do uh, critical food design is connected, for example, nowadays, as we were saying at the start of this talk, uh, with the problem, with the issue of uh, when we want to use foreign uh, words to uh, foreign words for for our uh, phenomenon. So uh, in Italy we have a, a beautiful word uh, for food that is cibo, but it's uh, from some here that nobody in Italy uh, use uh, the word cibo anymore. Nowadays everybody talk about food and well. Uh, here we are speaking in English, so uh, we must use the word food, but as we said, uh, usually in Italy we use the word cibo and not food. While it's like three, four, five years that in Bologna, but mainly in Italy as well, probably someone of you can tell us uh, that it's the same also in uh, 
in their country. Uh, everybody here used the word uh, food, and food became a brand, uh, a marketing brand, a um, touristic brand, and the city of Bologna, uh, like three years, four years ago, opened its, uh, its air, airport hub to low-cost uh, to low-cost uh, companies and it generates uh, a big increase in, in tourism but it's a, a tourism made of a short staying like a weekend or less and so uh, when municipality and an agency uh, that is uh, mid-private and mid-public agency uh, working on tourists has to Tourist, uh, which is the main character of Bologna, uh, tourists answer that authenticity and genuinity are the main characteristics of Bologna. And so they decided to build at the table by a, 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 a tourist strategy this authenticity passing through food. There is a, a tradition and an history, an historic value of Bologna, but you can understand easily uh, that if uh, this genuinity and this authenticity are built on a, as a strategy on a table, they cannot be uh, real, they cannot be genuine, and they cannot be authentic. So, in the last year in Bologna, open and, and were pushed to open, were endorsed to open. Uh, many 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 restaurants and uh, places where you can buy local food you can eat local recipe uh, and this created a, a misinterpretation of the uh, of our tradition and most of them are um, so commercial chain big commercial, big commercial chain, chain uh, the the big food industry uh, has arrived. Uh, we are waiting to open in October in Bologna uh, a huge uh, place that it, it has called by its owner a Disney World of food, where there will be like 70, uh, no, 27 restaurants regional restaurant and uh, artificial and fake supply chain, uh, fake production chain to show people the real agriculture uh, world and the real food world of Italy. And this is harmful, this is harmful for the city, this is harmful for the citizen, this is harmful for the tourist itself. So this is not the right way for us to promote the the real tradition of our city. And Bologna decided to have also a brand for this, this Bologna city of food. So we decided to decline this brand in Bologna city of food parts with a by project of subversive communication and counter branding. Yeah, this is our last work that we show um, during uh, the main art fair in the city that was uh, as, as two weeks ago. At the end of January, yeah. And the uh, action and the participation of this artwork consists in uh, giving to people passing on in the fair 2,000 stickers uh, with hashtag Bologna City of Food Park, asking them to uh, attach and to uh, sign to underline the situation of food poor in the city, like to uh, build a, a new semantic cloud and at the same time a sort of uh, uh, anti-guide, anti-guide to, uh, to the food poor situation in the city. And to close, uh, you saw, uh, as you can see, these are um, this project uh, are uh, totally different. There are projects where not only the role of food is different, but also its present itself. And using food in a wide sense uh, doesn't entail always its presence. Uh, using it as a tool allows us to use it also in a symbolic way. Uh, just as a reference or even in an absence at least. Because each of these situations offer many elements to stimulate independent thoughts and awareness that are the goal of our critical food approach, finally. 
So uh, I just would like to say that the PCR uh, Kaka is going, so is working on the theme of uh, archive. So we are going to build an archive of uh, young artist and design, designer um, working on food culture. And so um, we would just like to um, uh, ask you to keep in touch, write us, uh, send your project, your portfolio, and uh, yeah, so to make network and uh, keep in touch. Yeah, and be aware of the address because our webmaster brilliant idea to make panemachirchance.s uh, is not uh, useful when we must uh, say our email address. So this presentation stopped it's here. It's over. And now we come back to Francesca. Thank you so much, guys. It was wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, before we continue, I do have to say something. My mother just connected <laughs> to see your presentation, guys, but she doesn't speak English. And the first slide that she saw was Bologna Città del food, uh, food, uh, porn. Like, food Porn. And she sent me a text on WhatsApp asking, <laughs> Bologna Città. So she's a bit confused, guys. I'm going to take this. Like, mamma, yeah, mamma, si, è tutto a posto. These are two guys from Bologna. These are two guys from Bologna. And think about the fact that they put together something that is called Cacca. Pensa che hanno messo insieme un, un gruppo artistico che si chiama Cacca. Va bene? Ciao! Okay. Uh, having done this bit of uh, personal business, guys, we go back to you. Thank you so much for this illuminating uh, presentation and for um, uh, sharing with us your work which I really find fascinating as, as, as the more you talk, the more I'm convinced that your location within the food design world is definitely between critical food design and food poetry in a way. Um, but I do, I do really empathize with you uh, on, on, on how you might have felt at first uh, a bit, um, um, oh yeah, my mom is texting me and she's not saying good words for me. Yeah, thank you, ciao mama, grazie. <laughs> uh, how the world of food design might uh, have uh, felt like a, um, not the right place for you, especially for the word design. And it's exactly what I felt at the beginning of my journey within food design, because we come for a, from a, a country that has such a strong, Italy, that has such a strong um, uh, design position. For us, design is industrial design, product design. And I think the tradition is still like that, very strongly like that. Um, but outside of Italy, when I moved outside and I met the rest of the world of design, then I uh, perceived and I experienced how this uh, world has all sorts of shades and colors. Uh, so what you do, I can call it, I, some specifically, maybe some parts more than other, I can call it food design, absolutely. But I do understand how you guys might um, feel a difficulty. Maybe not to perceive yourself as food designers or critical food designers specifically, but to explain to other people, to Italian people, that you are food designers. Uh, so with that regard, I kind of wanted to ask you, um, with, with regards to having to work for, or having to work in, in, no, because you don't just work in, in Italy, but with regards to having to work with performances where most of the time, most of the people are Italian, uh, have you found it difficult to, or what, 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 was, what do you think uh, people's perception was of your performances, given that uh, Italian participants are people with such a strong, um, heavy and sometimes very specific uh, concept of food that comes from a deep culture of food. You, me, uh, yes, um, you are totally centered the point. And as we said during the presentation, uh, we started working uh, like Panem Circenses when we uh, live in uh, Berlin. That is. Uh, a city that 
probably everybody knows that is really open to, uh, to any form of uh, creative and art and contemporary uh, way to uh, yeah to, to develop uh, creative projects and creative thoughts so uh, there we uh, we were sure that people can catch all the dimension of our work included the, uh, the gastronomic uh, one and the, the, the part of tasting and eating but uh, with the uh, giving the, the right role, the right uh, importance, even to... When we came back to Italy, uh, as we were saying before, the first work we, we, we did here, uh, even if there were uh, heavy and huge work with a lot of dimension, with a lot of level, uh, symbolic, uh, ritual, cultural one, aesthetic one. Yeah, and it took place in an art gallery. And it so took place in an art gallery, so not in a restaurant, uh, in contests that uh, must suggest to people there were something different from just eating. Finally, people uh, focus on the recipe, focus on what they were eating, focus on uh, the fact that the taste was different from the one that grandma uh, used to used to cook and blah 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 and all the rest so that's why we started to uh, reduce or to uh, reconfigure the role of food and you must think that when we came back to Italy uh, first and uh, the, the very first time uh, we had many offer to uh, job offer to make like catering but uh, when we presented our project uh, people the client just cut off all the dimension of the artistic and performative project and, and take the food yeah but we did the same we said okay, <laughs> we, said, okay we, we can do it but i mean uh, it, it's not our proper job uh, we, we thought a lot to, to start a catering, uh, just a catering, but finally it was too tight for us to, to, to make no, that's just not this, our and it's not that's our work. It's, so, these are uh, food designer, very good food designer that make this kind of work and they are really, really good at that. Um, we, we didn't, uh, we are not in contrast with this kind of uh, work but it's not our research so we try and it's really difficult but uh, slowly we are uh, we are doing it we are trying and the center for the contemporary art on food culture has also this uh, function to educate and form people on this kind of approach to food yeah because it's a double bound so um I would say so. Most of the people uh, doesn't get other um, layers aspect on food culture, and uh, in the contemporary art world, people think that working on food culture is something not really high because food uh, is not high, but something about matter. So that's really yeah. In, in the food, that interest. Yeah, we 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 yeah, stop. That's uh, that's enough. <laughs> No, no, no. The way you're saying makes a, a lot of a lot of lot of sense, uh, which is something that um, it, it's it's part of probably the difficulties that you have to deal with being in a field that is really emerging. Uh, uh, because I, I, in a way, I kind of feel that food design all, in all its facets, where they come from. Uh, is probably has probably more roots than uh, art made with food. Yeah, 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 yeah. So way, It's probably easier to understand food design than food art. And you come from an art background, artistic background, so you have to really probably you, as you were saying, you have. I understand if you have struggled making your way and making your uh, work understood. Yes, even because you, you know well that uh, in Italy we always wait that things uh, 
come from abroad. And when when it comes from abroad, it's right, but we don't have uh, the, the, the courage to start a path by ourselves. So definitely, we must wait the, the food design uh, arrive in Italy coming from uh, New York, Berlin, uh, Dubai, <laughs> and I don't know about that. I don't know quite a few people who, who would disagree with that. People think that food design was, many people think that food design was born in Italy. So anyway, let's not get into that because we're never get, going to get into that <laughs> otherwise. I wanted to ask you, uh, so I understand you both don't have a food background. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Just like, uh, just like domestic and passionate. You had a must. Yeah, I, 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 got, a, I got a theoric. Uh, food background. I had a, a master in history and culture of food. Okay, okay. so uh, both of you were not trained as chefs or, uh, or, uh, or food scientists or whatever, but at some point you find yourself including these uh, beautiful, uh, volatile, uh, delicate material as part of your performances. So I wanted to ask you, how did you deal with that? How did that happen? What were the difficulties and what would you suggest to young uh, uh, for designers who are maybe starting a similar um, journey because you see many uh, there's many um, young food designers or young in in not in as their age but in their professional career so in their maybe people who have been industrial designers or architects up until yesterday for 30 years but now want to work with food and want to become a designer so there's a lot of these of people like these who don't have a background with food, who don't know the first thing about cooking, cooking professionally, but they want to do it. And they should not feel discouraged to start a career uh, on that has to do something the, with that has to do with something that brings together creativity and food, whatever you want to call it. Because you can always, always collaborate with other people. If yeah. you don't know about cooking, you call somebody who, call, who knows how to yeah. cook. So I wanted to ask you about your journey and what are the advices that you would give to people and, and, and maybe if we can learn, learn from the things that went well for you and the things that didn't go very well for you at the beginning. Uh, so, um, so we started to... Um, uh, we started this path together, actually, I think. And um, so for me, this relation with food, of course, start at home with my family. And then together when we um, live and work together one year in a um, farm, in our, our rural farmhouse in Tuscany, um, where we had a vegetable garden, animals, and we were as well in the kitchen. And so we somehow start uh, there. And so it's a, a passion that now is, um, is my life. And so I never stop to, to study, to learn, to have curiosity about food. And now it's more or less five years that we really do it professional. And every day I found something different and what I should say that is so just should be your uh, passion and uh, yeah, very dangerous yeah. as well um, because, uh, something that we nutriated by our um, aspect of our work is that in uh, contemporary art the, there's a um, one of the most important curator in Italy uh, that says is called she is Angela Bettese, and she uh, published a book that is called uh, Si fa con tutto, you can make up with everything. This is the, uh, her approach to contemporary art. And uh, this is the same approach we use it, and you don't have to be discouraged if you don't have the, uh, the knowledge uh, of uh, professional cooking, because Better one of the best things that happened to us is to can work with professional. And I mean, I I, I don't have uh, it, it's not my job to become a professional chef. And if I need uh, a professional dish cooked by a professional chef, 
what I have to find is just to find a chef that can understand my project. And it is uh, what happened to us when we arrived in Italy, where we lived in a little town in, uh, in Veneto, that is called Asolo. 300 uh, person, just 300 person lived there. And one of that, per we were coming from Berlin, so 4 million of people, and we arrived in 300 uh, hamlet in, in Veneto, near the mountain. And there were uh, one man that's got a restaurant, he was uh, totally crazy, <laughs> like uh, a good part of chef. And um, he, he catches at the, in, in a way, he catches all our poetry and all of our uh, approach. And we passed two years and a half uh, in his kitchen every day working together and a lot of beautiful things uh, came out from that kitchen. Uh, putting together his knowledge and his technical knowledge and our idea and our theoretical and philosophical and historical background. Just to, to find the, the right uh, partners to work with. That's, That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think it gave a lot of uh, um, just um, like a, a pat on the back to anybody who is feeling a little bit discouraged. Oh my God, I don't know how to do this. I have to collaborate with other people. Don't worry. And, and first of all, you're going to have a lot of fun. You're going to learn and then it's gonna, the job is going to be easier and you're going to, uh, you know, um, yeah. enjoy partnership which are always great. Yeah. Ludovico and Alessandra, we have a question from Eric. Uh, wonderful projects you are doing, uh, Smiley Face. How do you fund finance them? Thank you, Eric. Yeah, we, we expected this, <laughs> this question. <laughs> Yeah, because the life of artists are, are always so uh, um, romantic, but how yeah, do you do it? It's right, it's right. Thank you, Eric. And basically, uh, in Germany, when we were in Berlin, there was an expression that was uh, Leben Kunstler, this uh, artist of life, that it means uh, in, in German that you can uh, manage a, a lot of situa different situations to try to uh, raise money, so we make a uh, seminar, we make lesson, we make a graphic project, and sometimes we sell our artworks. Yeah, sometimes we, we have comments, yeah, yeah. commission, so uh, sometimes a public announcement, and we had also an association. So um, I am a project manager, and so. Um, participate to grants, so for example, the Kaka, so the place, we won um, a grant, and so we had this for uh, for free, for four plus four, so eight years, uh, and uh, all the last year uh, festival, we got um, financial yeah, grant as well. Public announcement. That and uh, so, and actually, so we try to send our uh, this is work. Uh, yeah, mostly yeah, basically also is, graphics. So yeah. we send like so for professionals, and so it's something uh, borderline. We we need every day to find something different. It's really um, difficult. Yeah, the good the good thing is that um, the artistic sensibility uh, will give us a little difference from other professional. Uh, for example, in uh, uh, graphic design, or uh, when we uh, do workshop or labs or something like this, uh, probably it's a different vision of what we see and what we, uh, the way in which we approach uh, the things. So even from for this, uh, we can. Uh, we can manage a lot of different works and the result is always a little bit different from the uh, traditional and common one. So even as a graphic studio or a workshop maker or a seminar and lecturer, we are uh, quite, uh, quite lucky because uh, our approach gives different results and people like these different results. That's great. Thank you so much, guys. Before we go, I just want you, I want 
I just want to give you another chance to explain um, how can people get in touch with you for CACA specifically. Let's say, uh, how can people participate, uh, collaborate with you? Let's say that somebody has a project that they want to do and they want to do with CACA. Uh, can that happen? Uh, how can people collaborate with you? Uh, and how, what, what uh, uh, opportunities does CACA present for anybody who wants to um, jump into this world? So, um, as Alessandro was saying, this year uh, CACA start working on the archive. We want to build an archive of emergent, of uh, not, uh, not in the age, but young designer or artist uh, working with uh, food in a meaningful way. Um, everybody uses food in a meaningful way with the approach of uh, awareness people by using food in their work, in their project, is invited to uh, send us a portfolio or a CV or whatever they want and they can enter, the, they can be part of the CAC archive we are building this year and we also have a, a physical space so uh, we can find manner to uh, show their project and their work to organize exhibit and uh, uh, where it's possible uh, we can also uh, we also have a good dialogue with uh, part of the municipality and with other associations so we can organize exhibit uh, not only inside our studio but also uh, in other uh, location in the city and that's that's all for the moment for the moment for the moment yeah we are building something new but uh, the news we are building something new that is uh, no, it's a little long because we are uh, moving on the appennino so uh, there we'll have uh, a big house and a lot of uh, soil and we build there uh, a circuit of uh, artistic residency there but in the, it takes some time. Yeah, starting from the ground, so agriculture, so natural agriculture and art contemporary art, but, but the next year. So. Next, 2017? Mm, 2018. Okay, guys, stay mm, tuned. Yeah. I, can, I want to yeah. be there and come there so yeah. much. For sure, for sure. Uh, let <laughs> us know, please. I want to share everything, every information you guys have. Um, thank you so much. Uh, thank you from the audience as, as well. Uh, Eric is saying thank you so much for your insight and sharing um, your wonderful artwork. I second that completely. Um, thank you, Francesca. Thank you, thank you, thank you for inviting us. Thank you for taking the time, really, and for believing in this uh, crazy food design live conference uh, free virtual project. Uh, thank you to the audience who have been participating with us. Thank you for everybody in the chat room, uh, following from the website, probably following from YouTube. Um, I'm going to see all of you guys in half an hour, more or less, at 6.30 GMT plus one. Yes, 6.30 GMT plus one for our last keynote presentation. At the moment, uh, for now, I'm going to say thank you again to Ludovico Pensato and Alessandra Ivo from Panem et Circenses. You've been wonderful. Your work is inspirational. And I wish you uh, a lot of luck for your future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you, so much. Thank you everybody. Thanks. Bye. Um, and write you. us if you want to be part of Project. Definitely. Please do. All the references are in the uh, conference website. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful evening and happy food design.